Hi everybody, this is Mr. Pollar. In this video, I am going to be discussing an experiment I have my students do to learn more about the process of photosynthesis. So to get started, let's review some basic information about photosynthesis. First, let's take a look at the chemical equation that summarizes this important biological process. So here we're using formulas, CO2, H2O, uh, reacting the presence of light is producing C6H12O6 plus O2. Now, we should also use a word equation to summarize this. So we have carbon dioxide, CO2, reacting with water, H2O, which is going to produce glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen, O2. We want to identify the reactants. These are the compounds present before the reaction takes place. These are the things to the left of the arrow, water, carbon dioxide. The products are the things made by the process. These we'll find to the right of the arrows in the equations. So this is the glucose and the oxygen. It's important that we're forming glucose and oxygen. We need those things. We also want to identify in this reaction experiment the excess reactant and the limiting reactant. We can see that we're using an aquatic plant it's going to be completely submerged in water. This means the plant is going to have more than enough water. Assuming we give it enough light, the limiting reactant will be the carbon dioxide. That's going to determine how much photosynthesis of the light reaction takes place. We'll run three trials. We're going to boil tap water the day before the experiment, let it sit out overnight so it cools back down. This is going to produce water that has a really small amount of CO2 dissolved in it because gases have a low solubility in warm water. So we're basically making the water go flat by boiling it. Our second trial, we use tap water, which is going to have a medium amount of CO2. This is also left overnight, so it's the same as the other water. Our third and final trial is going to use tap water that was left sitting out overnight. Right before the experiment, we add some baking soda, which undergoes a reaction to produce carbon dioxide. So that's a high CO2 test. Now let's take a look at some video, actual video, from this experiment. So we see the summary equation below. We're seeing the plants. They're completely submerged in water. We're shining light on them. And now if we zoom in, I want you to look at the tip of the plant. What you're going to see is a bubble forming on the tip. The bubble that's forming is oxygen gas. This is one of the important products of the photosynthesis reaction. So we're forming this gas, actually in the leaves, it's traveling through the vascular tissues of the plant, kind of, like, kind of like the plumbing system of the plant. And because we have a cut end, it's going to leave through that cut opening. Uh, here's video of another plant, same experiment. Here we can see that there are a lot of little tiny bubbles that are leaving from this plant. These are bubbles of oxygen that are produced by the photosynthesis process. So by running the three trials, we're able to test how changing the level of CO2 is going to change the rate of photosynthesis. Now I'm going to pause my video here. This is a sample data set which gives us an idea of what the data from this experiment will look like when it's run by my classes or other classes. My students who missed the lab are going to use this data set to do their makeup work. Uh, so I want you to pause your playback my students so that you can copy down this data set. This is what I want you to base your analysis work on. Now I'll continue playback of the video uh, so we can see that we have definite differences. This is real measurable differences in the amount of oxygen which is being produced. This is uh, the result of the light reaction for photosynthesis. Thank you for watching everybody. I'm glad you checked out my video and you can always find more of my videos by visiting my YouTube channel which is shown right here. Goodbye, everybody.